Hey guys, this is Nick and welcome to my Linux experiment. So I just got my new computer and I started messing around with it a bit. Here are a few impressions on how Linux runs on it. The machine. I tried a full AMD build this time, so I went with a Ryzen 5 2600. This is a 6 core 12 threads processor with a base clock of 3.4 GHz and able to turbo boost up to 3.9. It is way beefier than a previous Core i5 7300HQ which was only quad-core with a base clock of 2.5 GHz and a max frequency of 3.5, which it could sustain for a lot less time since it was in a laptop. I went with 16 GB of DDR4 RAM, which should be a nice upgrade over the 8 GB I had previously, and the graphics card is a Radeon RX 580 with 8 GB of VRAM. This is definitely a huge step up from the 1050 Ti Mobile I had previously, with only 4 GB of VRAM and neutered performance. This PC came with a 1TB SATA hard drive, which is supposed to be a hybrid, but I don't really know what portion of it is an SSD. I'll probably replace this disk with an SSD pretty soon, and the computer didn't come with too much RGB, which suits me fine since I do not like to work under neon signs. Using Elementary OS I prepped a USB key to install Elementary OS on this machine, since it's my distro of choice. Installation went smoothly and was fast, with every piece of hardware detected out of the box and working nicely. In use, the machine behaves as expected, with every core of the CPU being recognized. The graphics card is identified as a Radeon RX 480, which is not all that surprising since it's basically a small revision of that older model. The hard drive is definitely a bummer though, and apps open slower than I was used to on my laptop, with Firefox taking a very long time to even show up, and the system losing some responsiveness with a lot of windows opened. An SSD really seems like a must for this computer, so I'll be getting my laptop to put its SATA SSD in as soon as possible. All in all though, performance is good all around and the slowdowns didn't occur that frequently. Rendering a video. Since my main goal was to slice rendering times by a fair bit, I took one of my most complex projects, my GNOME vs KDE video, which has a lot of transitions, wipes and multiple clips playing at the same time. Previewing the video in real time was faster, which has always been a problem on Canon Live, with frame rate tanking quickly as soon as you add a transition or composite a few video tracks. So this will definitely make creating these kind of videos easier. As per rendering times, on the same project, the laptop completed the rendering in 58 minutes. The new AMD machine did the same thing in 52 minutes, which is 6 minutes less. While that does not seem that impressive on paper, shaving 10% of the time on a video render is still a great improvement, and I couldn't be happier about it. Playing some games. I only game at 1080p since I don't have a higher res monitor and I don't really care about 4K for the moment. I ran a few benchmarks. I used the graphics drivers PPA for more up-to-date MESA and drivers, but I kept the default open source ones. Dawn of War 3 got around 40 FPS at ultra settings, running without Vulkan and with OBS recording in the background. Without OBS running, everything was a bit smoother due to the reduction in CPU usage. The game crashed when I tried to start it with Vulkan, but after installing libvulkan1 and the Mesa Vulkan drivers, duh, it worked, with lower performance than without it. Which was a surprise. Without any surprise though, CSGO ran above 60 FPS, but the FPS was all over the place with OBS recording. Without OBS running, it was a lot smoother, averaging 120 FPS. Total War Warhammer 2 runs smoothly on high settings at 60 FPS during battles and on the map, which is great. It pushes the PC quite a lot though, and you can definitely hear it. Like really hear it, this build is not quiet. These might not be the most recent games, but they're all I've got to try for now on Linux. And what about Steam Play? Well, this is where things started to go wrong. While my old laptop was perfectly able to run Warhammer Vermintide through Steam Play on DXVK, I kept getting an access violation error and could not get it to even start on the new computer. I could solve that by starting Vermintide with Wine D3D11, but performance was terrible in the low 20s with everything set to medium. That was a bit underwhelming. Spacehold Deathwing had problems as well, but once I started it in windowed mode, it worked great and I got 60 FPS with DXVK on a mix of high and max settings. Full screen doesn't work though, resulting in a transparent screen with audio playing but no image, but I already had that problem on the laptop. All in all, gaming on this build is a mixed bag. Performance is much lower than I would have expected on some games, 
And proton games don't seem to work well with DXVK compared to my older laptop, which could run them fine. I'll have to push these issues a bit more and try to find some fixes online, but after a few hours of searches, I could not find a solution. If you have some tips about that, I'll gladly take them. Other hardware compatibility. My computer did not come with a Bluetooth card, so I'm using my mouse with the 2.4GHz adapter, which works flawlessly. My keyboard is also plugged in, since it won't work through Bluetooth on Linux anyways. My regular monitor works well through HDMI, and I'll probably get a second one pretty soon, since the RX 580 can support a few. My Blue Yeti microphone also worked great out of the box. In conclusion, I'll have to try a bunch more Linux distros, but all in all I'm pretty happy about this new computer. It should definitely help with video creation and rendering, and if I can solve the issues I have with Steamplay and Proton, everything will be golden. I'll keep you posted when I have spent some more time with this machine, and every new video, including this one, will be created on this new machine. I hope you guys enjoyed this little tour of an AMD built and Linux, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye! If you enjoyed, please consider liking, subscribing, and turning on notifications. You can also follow me on Twitter at the Linux EXP. Thank you guys for watching, and goodbye.